Hello everybody and welcome to an updated video on how to set up a very basic Minecraft server that is very powerful and is completely free. Uh, I'm doing this as an update video because I was trying to follow the uh, original video a while back and realised that half of the commands don't work. So this is an updated uh, video which explains how to set one up that does actually work. So to start with, what's going to happen is I'm going to go through how to create a VM and how to set it up to be able to run the server. Um, this will also function as a setup for any of the panel videos, which I will be, again, refreshing in due course. Um, so you'll come to this video, it'll show you how to set up the, the VM, and you'll go back to the panel video after that's done to set all that stuff up. However, if you don't want a panel, the rest of the video will be explaining how to set up just a basic Minecraft server running through the VM on screen. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, if you go into the description of the video, then you'll find a link to a website. This website has uh, the commands that you'll need for when we're in the terminal, as well as all of the links that you might need and instructions on how to use screen because it can be a bit finicky. One disclaimer that I do have to give is that um, screen can, like I say, be a bit finicky and not always work amazingly, um, so you have been warned on that. So, to get started, you're going to go with the first link that's on the web page, which will take you to here, and then you're going to want to set yourself up with uh, an Oracle free tier account. Now, in amongst all of the setup, it will ask you to use a credit or debit card to verify your identity. Um, it will charge you, I think it's something like 80p. Um, however, it will refund you this eventually, so it won't actually charge you anything. Um, and yeah, the credit card will stay linked. However, it will not charge you so long as you set up your uh, stuff correctly. If you set it up wrong, yeah, it will charge you. Um, but as long as you follow this video and set it up how I show you, you will never get charged. Okay? So you're going to head to this link and you're going to set up all your stuff. And then once you've done that, you will be greeted with, well, you should be greeted with a page that looks like this. Um, so then once you're in here, you're going to need to scroll down to create a VM instance and then click on that. So you can give the instance a name. For me, I'm just going to call it uh, basic video okay and then you can scroll down now in placement you're just going to want to leave that as it is you can go to ad2 or ad3 if you want however there's generally less availability in those two and if you end up in the wrong one it sometimes tries to charge you so my recommendation is just leave it on ad1 okay then if you click edit on security you can leave both of these as they are if you know what you're doing. You might decide you want to put them on, but for the basic, you don't really need it. Um, then if you go into image and shape, like this, then you can leave it as Oracle Linux. However, there are some things that don't work very well, so my recommendation would be that you change it. And to do that, you just click on edit, come in here, and then you've got your selection of all these different OSs. Uh, the one I'm going to be using today that I recommend you choose is Ubuntu. Scroll down and then pick the most recent one that isn't a minimal or an Arch 64 because they are missing some features. Um, so I'm going to go with that one. Select image. Then the shape. I also highly, highly recommend you change the shape because if we go into it, the default, which is the this one, is you get one CPU core and one gigabyte of memory, which is really naff. Um, now you can go for AMD, you can go for Intel, however these um, you have to pay for them, you have to pay extra. So what I recommend you go for is Ampere, just select this one, and then it has many cores as you like. Well, to an extent. Um, in the free version you should be able to get 4 CPU cores and 24 gigabytes of RAM, however for some reason my account doesn't let me do that. So I just go with 4 and 18. It's not that much of a difference, really. Um, something worth considering is sometimes when you first set up your account and you're on the free trial, because you get a free trial of the paid-for stuff, 
is it, this will go up to a lot more, and I think you know, Mount Memory goes up to like ninety six. People have seen. If you go that high, because you, theoretically you can, then it will use your free trial credits, and when your free trial credits run out, the account will be deleted. You won't start getting charged. You don't get charged unless you upgrade to a pay for account, but the account the server will just get deleted. So it's worth keeping that in mind to make sure you go inside the free limits. Okay, so click select shape, scroll down, and then we're going to need to do some stuff with the networking. So yeah, you open networking, and then in here you will, uh, and it's your first time setting up, you won't have this option to select an existing virtual cloud network because you haven't already got one, so you'll just want to choose create a new one. For me, I am going to leave it with my existing one because I don't need to have lots of um, VCNs, there's no need for that. Subnet, again, it'll this one won't exist. For me, I'm just going to leave it as it is because I don't need to create loads of them and there's no real difference, doesn't affect it, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Assign a public IPv4 address, you need to make sure that's ticked. You need a public IPv4 address, otherwise you're not going to be able to... Well, you're not going to be able to um, connect to your server at all. So make sure you've got one of those. Scroll down, click on save a private key. You can, if you want, save a public key. There's not really any need to do that. Um, but yeah, you can. You can also, if you have your own way of doing uh, your keys, you can upload or paste public keys. Again, there's not a massive need. You can just have it generate them for you and then save it. And then leave all this as it is. Sometimes this is ticked, sometimes it's not. Doesn't really matter. Over here, you might see that it says £1.56 a month. I, I don't know why. I It did that last time I set one up, and it never charged me any money. So if it says that, you should be fine. If you're in the free trial, just keep an eye on the, um, the amount of credits you've got, because if they start going down, then you will need to change something, because you are going to get... It is going to delete your account when it ends. So then once you've done all of that, you can just click create. And then it'll take you to here. And it'll say provisioning. For a little while, while it's saying provisioning, we can go into the subnet, which will look like this once you click on the link. And then you're going to click on default security list for VCN. And then that'll take you to here. And now this is where you're going to do the first step of port forwarding. So you're going to click Add Ingress Rules. Then you can leave most of it as it is, but you want to add in here 0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0. Leave the IP protocol as TCP, and then you have a choice. You can either type in all the ports you need to port forward, so for default Minecraft that's 2.5565, comma, any other ones that you need to add. Um, yeah, you can add as many different ports as you need. Um, because if you're doing a panel, then at this point you will need to forward all the ports that are needed for your panel. If you're doing any plugins or mods, such as DynMap or the Simple Voice Chat mod, you'll need to port forward their ports, so you can add all those in there. Or, you can do what I do, which is just leave that blank, and then it forwards all the ports. Okay, but whichever one you'll do, you do, you'll need to do it for both TCP, then add another ingress rule, and do it again for UDP. Again, exactly the same with this. Put in the same ports, just change that to UDP. Okay, and then you'd add, click Add Ingress Rules. I've already done it, I've got them here. Okay, I've had allowed all traffic because when we get into the terminal, um, we'll need to do the ports anyway. It is slightly less secure doing it this way, I'm not going to lie to you. However, if you want to add more ports in the future, it's so much simpler and just saves you a bit of time because you haven't got to log on to here, go through all the steps. It, it is just a lot simpler. So, once you've done that, you can press back twice on here, and then that'll take us back to this basic page. And now, as you can see, it is running. So, so now it's time for you to download a program that will allow us to access the server. So, in order to do that, you're going to come to this, which will be again on the web page, and it is called Putty. Now you'll need to download um, the Windows one, because it is only for Windows. If you're doing um, 
Linux, if you're on a Linux machine or a, um, a Mac, then there is a way to do it. However, I don't know it. Um, it's built in, so you haven't got to download anything, so you're lucky there. Um, but your best bet is just to Google it and find out how to access um, a Linux server uh, using your respective operating system. For, but for Windows, you're going to want to download this. You just click on whichever one you've got, install it, run it, and then you will have uh, Putty downloaded. Now, when Putty downloads, it'll actually download um, a number of different things. The first one is Putty Gen. And we're going to need to use this to convert the private key we downloaded into the private key that Putty itself can use. It's a bit weird where it can't just use the one we downloaded, but it's how it works. Okay, so you want to click on Load, and then navigate to a folder that you know, move your file, your um, private key you downloaded, move that into the folder, and then click on all files. So in there you should have your private key that you downloaded, and that's it. There shouldn't be anything else because it's just a blank folder to keep it safe. Click on it, click open, you can just OK that, ignore all this, and press save private key. If you want to save it without a passphrase, yes, and then you can give it whatever name you want. I'm just going to go with access and save it, and then you can close PussyGen down. Okay. So then the next program that you're going to use is just basic Putty. So in here you're going to type Ubuntu at, and then you're going to copy your public IP address and paste that in there. Then click the little plus next to SSH little plus next to auth credentials. Now, if you're running an older version of Putty, then I recommend you update to a newer version, um, but it'll just be an auth, and then the browse button will be in here. But for newer ones, it's there in credentials. Probably key for file authentication, click browse. Navigate to that same folder that you saved your original private key and now your Putty private key, and then click on it and click open. Then click open down here, and then you should connect to your server. Okay, it says it's not cached, blah, blah, blah. Now, you'll either have the option to press accept, in which case this message will never come up again, or you can click connect once, in which case every time you'll have to approve it. I just press accept, because that's the simplest. And now you're in the terminal for your server. So, you can start off by typing sudo space dash s. Now, you don't have to do this, this one's kind of an optional thing, but if you don't, then for most of the commands you're about to run, you'll have to put sudo in front of it, and it's just simpler to do it like this. The next command is apt update, which will update uh, various repositories and stuff. And then once that one's done, it's apt upgrade. Okay, yes, I do want to continue. And then it'll upgrade and update everything so you're running with the newest version of um, your operating system. So we'll be back once that's finished updating. Okay, once it's finished updating, you'll be greeted with this screen. If you just press tab to get it over the red box, over OK, and then press enter, it'll be fine. Now you're back here, and now it's time to install Java. So Java's obviously something that needed to be run, that is needed to run um, Minecraft the server, um, and there's various different versions of it. So depending on what version of Minecraft server you're going to run, will depend on what version of Java you need to run. So for anything that is before 1.17, so that's 1.16, 15, 14, all of those, you'll just want to make that uh, an 11. For Java 17 specifically, you make it 16, and then for anything that is after 1.17, you can make it 17, okay? So it's kind of confusing. So before 1.17, you want to use Java 11. On 1.17, you want to use Java 16. On anything after Java, uh, sorry, on anything after Minecraft 1.17, so that's 1.18, 19, 20, and anything beyond, you want to use Java 17. 
a bit confusing. This will all be on the websites, so you can refer back to it if you need to. But yeah, all you need to do to change the version you're installing is change these two numbers to whatever it should be. And then hit enter. Yes, I do want to install it. Give it a second and I'll be back once it's finished installing it. Okay, so now it's done that, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to finish off the port forwarding. So we did the first part in the web page for Oracle, the next bit we do in here. Now obviously most people who have used uh, Ubuntu to some extent will have come across UFW, which is the most preferred method of port forwarding. Um, however, for some reason, it doesn't seem to work on here. I don't know why. If you can get it to work, send me a, a message on Discord and I will happily send an update to this video. But I cannot get it to work. So what we use is we use something called Firewalled. So that's the command to install it. Run that. Um, and then give it a second to finish off installing. And then you're going to need to do each of the ports you want to forward. So it's this big long command which obviously you can copy from the list of commands that are available on the website. There you go. Um, and then if you are doing a panel then at this point you'll need to just edit these numbers here to whatever ports you need to do or if you're doing any plugins or mods that need more ports you'll need to change them here um, and then again it'll need to be UDP and TCP. Okay, obviously that one's already been done, but you can change it to be whatever ports are required. And then once you've done all of them, you're just going to want to type in this command to reload the firewall, and now it should be done. Now, that's everything for setting up the VM at this point. If you're doing uh, one of the panel videos and you just come over here to set up your VM, you are done. You can return back to your video on how to set up your panel, and it'll be golden. For everyone who doesn't want to set up a panel and just wants to have the more basic um, running it straight through the terminal system, carry on and we're going to finish setting that up now. So, you're going to want to type mkdir and then just the name of a folder. So I'm just going to go with server. It can be whatever you want though, this is just where you're going to store all of the um, files and stuff relating to your server. Then cd and then whatever you called it to go into there. And then, once you're in your folder, you're going to need to navigate to this website, which is the Minecraft website, where you can download um, the server. It is completely fully available on, it'll be available on the website, this link to here. And then you just hover over this download, you right click it, and you click copy link. Okay, then if you come back onto here, type wget, and then paste, then enter, then it'll download the minecraft server.jar onto your server. If you type ls and enter then you can see there's now a server.jar. So what you're now going to need to do is you're now going to need to just run it just with a little bit of RAM. I'm going to do it with just uh, one gig, um, but you can do it as much as it not really needed to do any because we're just going to run it up until the point where it fails because we haven't agreed to the EULA yet, um, which should just take a couple seconds. So you, go, you need to agree to the EULA. So now you type nano eula.txt and then you'll see it says false. You're going to go in and just change that to true and now you need to exit out of uh, this nano. So to do that you type press control x then just Y on its own, and then enter on its own. It's a bit of a weird way of getting out, not sure why, but if you press up and then enter, then you can just check. It has saved it, and it is still on true. Then you're going to want to run this command once again. This will create and set up your server. Again, I'm just doing it with a little bit of RAM, just one gig, because we're going to need to, once it started, we're pretty much going to need to just stop it straight away, because otherwise, um, and change something about it because if we don't then when we close this uh, window or you turn off your computer the whole thing will stop so yeah we're gonna need to change something however 
you can just come into back into here and copy your IP address because this is going to be what you use to connect to your server. So if you come onto Minecraft, add a server, paste that, and then we can wait for this to finish. Once it's finished preparing the spawn area, we can refresh and just make sure we're able to connect because as long as you've set everything up correctly, as I said to do in this video, this should now connect us to the world. There we go. So now we're in. However, as I said, if we were now to close this, the server will die. So we need to rectify that. So to do that, we need to reconnect to Pussy in exactly the same way as we did before. This is how you'll get onto it every single time. Boom, just like that. And as you can see, it didn't come up with the little pop-up because we pressed accept. Now you'll need to do sudo dash s again, and then you'll need to navigate into the server folder. And then it's time to run the server with a bit more RAM and in such a way that it won't just stop when you close this window or turn it off. So to do that, you can run exactly the same command again, this time again, like I said, with more RAM, but you add screen to the starts, and then enter. Now what this means is it's now kind of running in the background, so at this point you can close your putty, you can turn off your computer and the server will keep on running. Now if you want to exit out of the screen, as it were, then you press Control A and then D, and that'll detach you, and again you can close it, you can do whatever you want, and then to go back in, if we type screen, so it's dash R, whoops, with a space there, then it'll take you back in. So if I now join back to the server, I'm going to say it's taking forever for the moment, I don't know why, I'll give me a second. There we go, I'm in now. So now if I were to close this, remember last time it kicked me out, now it doesn't. I'm still in, I can keep playing and everyone is good to keep them playing and having their fun. So if you now want to go back in, then, oh, oh I need to go back into there and copy that again. Paste it, page auth credentials, browse that one, open. Then I've already shown you the command is screen dash r, but if you notice this time it's not going to work. That's because I'm in the Ubuntu user as opposed to the root user. So I do sudo dash s, then I'm signed into the root user, and now if I type screen dash r, it'll work. So I'm just going to stop the server because there's one more thing we need to do. Now your server is now completely set up and you can play and you can enjoy it as much as you want. However, if you want to add any mods or plugins or any of that kind of stuff, then you'll need to be able to access the files. Or if you wanted to add a custom world, for example. Again, you'll need to be able to access the files. Um, so the way you do that is with one final program called FileZilla. So this is available for all different platforms. You want to download it, and then you'll use that to connect. So once you've downloaded it, this is what FileZilla looks like. What you need to do is go on to Edit, then Settings, then SFTP, and then Add Key File. In here, you're going to want to navigate to that folder that's got your private keys, and then select the original one, not the party one, the original one, open, and then click OK. Then, in host, you type sftp colon forward slash forward slash and then go into here, grab your IP address, paste that, username as Ubuntu, and then click Quick Connect. It'll say enter a password, there is no password, so you just leave it blank, okay, try to connect, and then boom, we're in. Now you'll notice that I'm not able to delete anything. That's because we haven't given permissions yet. So the way that we do that is we run this command and then put the file directory um, of the folder. 
So it should look something like that. So slash home, slash Ubuntu, and then the name of whatever the folder with all of your um, server stuff is. Enter, and now you'll notice I can delete the whitelist, I can delete the world folder, I can delete everything. If I had tried to do this before, then it would have just not let me delete anything. Okay? So now that is everything. It's everything that you need to know on how to set up your Minecraft server. Um, as I say, it's reasonably powerful, it's not the most powerful server, it's far from being the worst, and it's a lot better than most free servers that you can get online. Um, so yeah, I hope this has been useful to you. Thanks for watching.